Practical Experience in Cybersecurity, a Dilemma. I've talked about this topic many times on this channel before. If you're a frequent viewer, you've likely seen project video series, security project ideas, and more. Attaining practical experience in security is challenging. The learning roadmap often goes like this. As a student, you're looking for the best ways to learn, and perhaps this is a balance between a combination of theory and practical hands-on experience. As an employer, you're often looking for high-quality candidates who have qualifications, and, and the top qualification is often how many years of experience do you have in security. And students, of course, lack the hands-on day-to-day experience in those relevant years, and so this leads to the experience dilemma, which then leads to not getting hired. So there are many different types of e-learning platforms, universities, books, some emphasizing theories, other offering, you know, resourceful labs, and then you have those overpriced ones. And really, it's just it's kind of overwhelming. And, and basically, my overall question is, how do you get relevant years of experience and knowledge to seek in this industry? You know, it's the catch-22 question. And one way that I've mentioned in the past is through side projects. This was the way that I was able to bridge the gap between theory and experience um, and Basically, wanting to write a program or simulate some sort of cool small scale business network or maybe write some cool malware. Um, really, all of this, it, it can be encompassed in different levels of side projects. And a cybersecurity home lab is often the grounds for building all of this. Security home labs are virtualized, often self-hosted on networks used to run various open source and community edition tools. These tools are often used or have very similar functionality to like real world tools that you would see in a business. I'm interested in your perspective though, and this is my seamless transition into a small little survey that I've constructed. It's eight questions. I wanna see your perspective and viewpoint on practical experience in security and cybersecurity home labs and, and uh, education. It's eight small questions. You'll be entered into a $20 gift card plus a Dibuda shirt. And this survey will serve as a guide for the resource that I'm currently building. Survey link will be in the description below and it will be live for 30 days since the time of this posting of this video. So yeah, you've seen me talk about cybersecurity home labs often. And to serve as an example of somebody who's perhaps done it better than me, um, I am joined by Nathaniel, who is a student in security professional. He has built and morphed his own really unique and cool um, security home lab. We've been talking uh, through email, and I really want to overview what he's done, why it's worked, and where he's going. But let's transition over to Nathaniel and, and overview this really cool security lab that he's built. So Nathaniel, uh, tell me about yourself. What, what are your interests in security? and? What were some of the challenges that you encountered when you first started in uh, security? Hey Grant, first of all, thank you for having me. I love your content that you put out there. Coming to the question, with respect to security, now with insecurity, I find that a lot of us are going directly into the offensive side and me included. I did come from that background where I wanted to go pure offensive, but in my current role, I am something between the offensive and defensive, what people would normally call a purple team. So I do the offensive attacks, but I also defend from them. And that gives a very good unique combination wherein you, there's security is like always a rat and mouse game, uh, a cat and mouse game. Sometimes the defenders are ahead, sometimes the attackers are ahead. But when you have an idea of both, I feel it gives a very unique edge. I work in a company called Rudra Cybersecurity as a purple teamer and the idea of building labs and building environments and breaking them breaking into them after that is where i learned a lot of unique skills what are some ways of a cybersecurity home lab that's helped you bridge the gap between theory and experience i have a home lab which i can replicate an environment even at a miniature scale extremely fast that tends or helps me to validate an idea or validate a concept. So the idea of having a home lab is not only for the sake of learning what already exists out there, but also testing maybe different methodologies as well as going deeper into concepts, which a lot of people don't go into. Would you mind showing us how you implemented your idea of cybersecurity home lab? Just kind of overviewing what your thought process is. Sure, Grant. So, what I have here is an Active Directory environment that I was setting up more from the sake of setting up from an operations point of view. So if a 
engineers coming and i'm not talking about a cyber security engineer i'm talking about a general engineer is coming and setting up an active directory what does he see what does he go through what are the options and security features as well as general functionality that he gets so when i understand how thing is how something is set up then i'll be able to break into it and that's the idea behind anything in security right it's understanding how things work as its core and then you can go and break into it so right now i'm still setting up my active directory environment out here in this lab and i have a windows server 2022 and two enterprise windows 10 enterprise vms open i see that you uh have on your left hand side there a little home lab folder can you just overview like what your thought process there i see you have gitlab um code server running what what is um what are you trying to emulate there on on that end in my home lab server i have or in my home lab folder i have multiple vms running different applications or services right from docker to kubernetes to a gitlab code server to a gitlab runner to even a private dns server the idea being that i'll be able to replicate any environment or situation that would normally exist in an enterprise so how are you um hosting all of this i see you have vmware workstation is is most of your home lab through uh self hosted virtualization a great chunk of it is hosted on my own home lab so i've got a pre- pretty beefy server this is not where i started started off with you know a simple 8 gb ram laptop with i think four cores so it's coming from that environment and right now i also have some few applications hosted on the cloud wherein you if i need to understand a cloud environment say something like aws s3 i'll just spin up a s3 bucket and see the different configuration options which are there with respect to iams all of that so the primary purpose being me having the ability to play with these applications and environments and understand at its core of what can i do as an attacker and what can i do as a defender so nisanyo what what do you recommend for those who are confused on where to start with cyber projects and the whole idea of cybersecurity home lab i'll suggest take on the problems that you have in your daily life so if you are a student and you're just going to college maybe create a mini ci cd pipeline that pulls down the weather report every day and maybe send you a simple whatsapp notification that this is the weather for today or you're learning you want to learn active directory set up a mini active directory environment in fact spin up a maybe a web server as well so you'll understand how these servers and services work in addition to that if you're already building a ci cd pipeline take it one step forward make it into a dev sec ops environment so something that i was working on when i was in college was having my notes in markdown and get converted and pushed into github yeah so basically you know when it comes to security home labs i do think that it's good just to like start really small like you had mentioned you know just setting up one active directory uh, windows 2022 yeah. server for example right it doesn't have to be anything like super complex um what you had shown right. us before it, it kind of emulates that mini enterprise like you've had mentioned um so you know just starting small starting with maybe that one problem like you said is is a is a great recommendation all right so nathaniel is there any recommendations on the specific resources for those who want to build home lab whether that's you know like e-learning resources or uh, hardware requirements it could be anything i'll first start off saying go to youtube there are a lot of resources there which people have made their own labs and go into the background of what kind of labs they have made some people focus more on networking some people focus more on docker environments some on cloud so see the channel that vibes with you and vibes with what you want to achieve and take ideas from there something that i personally faced going from you know a small environment or very small setup that i had to something that i have right now is first focus on ram vms eat up ram extremely fast then go to your storage your cpu is like the last in the selection that i would do ram is ram and storage is what eats up the most thirdly use ebay or any of your you know second hand markets a lot of businesses also give away the hardware or sell the hardware at dirt cheap rates just because they have to, they have a life cycle refreshment look into that talk to businesses talk to local businesses talk to non profits they'll definitely be able to help you out 
and lastly don't copy the home lab of any one particular person because their scenarios would have been different what they ty- trying to replicate would have been different okay take ideas talk to them about it ask them for suggestions ask people in the community for suggestions they'll definitely help you out don't copy it directly because everyone has a different mindset with what they want to achieve in their lab yeah those are great recommendations and you know had as you'd mentioned before um you know starting small so Nathaniel, you work your way up to a really cool server environment, but you can even just start with your, um, you know, just your computer, your laptop, and um, like you had mentioned before. So, you know, that's those are great recommendations. I, I definitely need to look into eBay myself and try to pick up a dirt cheap enterprise server, like you said. Exactly, Grant. I mean, I start off with a, I think, four core, so four core laptop with eight GB RAM running Windows, and I needed Windows when I was in college, so. I had to do with what I had, and then gradually you scale up. But these small things is where you learn how to optimize on resources as well as take care of the resources you already have. When I say take care, is also your OS, your VMs, everything. So Absolutely. it definitely helps starting small. Absolutely, those are great recommendations. Uh, so thank you, Tiano, for joining us today. I appreciate you reviewing your environment and just giving us some tips to get started. If, if viewers are interested in reaching out to you personally uh, for any additional questions, is there an email or is there anything that uh, any social media handle that they can reach out to you? Yeah, I do blog a lot. So I started to put out a lot of blogs. So you can reach me out. You can look at my blogs out there. As well as LinkedIn. Yeah, sounds good. I will make sure to link that in the description below. Thanks to Nathaniel for sharing his insight into cybersecurity home labs. There's a lot of different ways to implement security home labs, and Nathaniel's is just one example of the many endless ways that you can implement practical experience in security. Uh, So like I said, if you're interested in sharing your perspective, feel free to take that survey. And uh, well, yeah, until the next time, you know what it is. Have a good day.